All right. Let's see. Do we? Yes, that looks correct. So good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be the last one here. Uh, hopefully not everybody is still asleep. So let's see how this goes. And by the way, just to clarify, the, the questions about security weren't paid by me originally. Just so happens that somebody asked every single question I was going to answer in a way or two. Let's see how this goes. First of all, I'm actually tomorrow going to talk about absolutely horrible statistics that don't make any sense, so I figured I would include one here. You see numbers like this everywhere where somebody states that this area is so and so much money and so forth. The good thing is though that when there's this much money at stake, whether this is a real number or not, people start to get interested. And when people start to get interested, they also get interested in security in general. Because basically, you don't do security for the sake of doing security. It's not fun, it's not interesting. It doesn't in and itself sell anything. So you have to have some kind of reason to do it. We have one major difference to all the other companies that have been presenting here so far. And it's this. We don't actually do AI. Well, we kind of do, but not really. It's actually our customers who are doing AI. So on the flip side, there's been a lot of good presentations today where people are saying that here's what we did. So we don't have that. But on the other side, what we have is visibility into every other customer we have doing all these interesting things. And then they come to us and say, we are doing this kind of thing. Do you see any security problems in it? So we get to see basically what everybody else is doing on this field and comment on that. It makes it quite interesting because you're not limited to just one kind of problem, one kind of business domain, or anything to that matter. So the good question is that when, for example, when people ask me to come and talk somewhere, the, the first question they ask is, well, can you talk about AI and security? And it's like, okay, I can do that. But what do you want to hear about? Because in and itself, that doesn't really yet mean much. It could mean using AI to implement security. We, we talked about this uh, a moment ago already about things like monitoring, detection capabilities and whatnot. These kind of use scenarios where we're using AI itself to implement security. But it also could mean the other side of this, and this is the one you hear less about, actually securing the AI itself. And this is the one people somehow tend to forget very easily. Because this is more about thinking, what could go wrong with the AI implementation itself? So let me cover the first point really, really quickly. You are absolutely guaranteed to use AI for your security today. There was originally a, a show of hands of how many people have completed the uh, uh, elements of AI. I think there was like most people here. If you do all went through that, you implemented a basic uh, spam filter, basically. So you try to detect spam based on, on some really simplistic logic. That is secure. That's basically how it works. If you are using email today, you are using machine learning. If you have an antivirus on your system, you are using machine learning. Or at least somebody is doing that for you. You absolutely cannot avoid this. If somebody, by the way, states that some companies are not investing in AI in security, uh, for, uh, sorry for my French, but that's bullshit. Because it simply isn't possible. You absolutely end up using it anyway. But then the other part, so what do we do about securing the AI itself? And this is where I think it gets more interesting. Because this is no longer just about implementing basic security stuff. You have the infrastructure, and this is your good old security. This is things like securing your servers, securing your cloud storage, doing all that stuff that you do for any kind of IT security application. Doesn't matter that it's AI or something else. It really doesn't matter that much. But what about the algorithm part? How many here, when you have done your, your AI implementation or you're working on AI on anything, how many of you have considered what kind of security needs to be implemented for the algorithm part of this. Anybody? Not that many hands. 
And this is usually the one that kind of blindsides people because when people ask about security, they expect to hear about servers and, and, and PCs and networks and stuff like that. This is the part people don't necessarily think about. Let me try to really quickly make the case for you why it actually does matter quite a bit. Cross-site scripting is a really, really, really classic security issue that affects every single website out there pretty much. It has been the leading cause of, of hacked websites for years and years and years. Started in 1990s roughly, this is when the first cases started appearing, you started seeing websites being attacked. Didn't really have a name back then, but, but people were using these kind of techniques. Doesn't really matter, you don't need to know the details about how it works. But in general, you can compromise a website using this. And as we move forward, an organization called OWASP creates these kind of listings every year where they list the most common problems affecting websites. For many, many years now, they have been publishing these lists of top 10 problems. And the same exact problem is present every single time. The 2017 one is the latest. It's still there. Same exact problem, works the same way. If you know how to defend against it, it hasn't changed a bit. If you learned all about this in 1990s, you know exactly what to do. It's a really boring problem. Let's think about AI for a moment. 56, roughly, it becomes an actual field of study. This is when people start coming up with all, this, all these things that we're talking about today. Obviously, more research was done before this, but let's use that as a starting point. Then let's jump to today. Well, not quite today, earlier this year. IBM releases a tool that you can get for free, which comes with a whole bunch of algorithms that you can use to attack an AI implementation or defend against attacks. So you might imagine that it implements all kinds of interesting attacks that happened and were figured out over the years, right? There's 60 some years of, of research being done. So what do you think it actually implements? It implements these things. These are the years of the research papers when they came out which explain how certain kinds of attacks against AI work. This was the question earlier, that how do you attack an actual AI? How do you make it do something it's not supposed to be doing? And here's the research on this. And here's the defense part. So if you start learning this stuff somewhere in here, you know quite a lot about how it works. Now obviously there's some more interesting stuff happening before, but a lot of the interesting attack stuff and the defense stuff and all this, it's actually very new. We really don't know that much about it. And that's a bit of a challenge for us. So where is the world actually going? And this is the part where, where it gets really interesting because we have to work with a lot of different companies to understand what they are actually doing, what they are concerned about, and how, how all this stuff affects them. What does cybersecurity mean for them in, in, in the first place? So my time is roughly up, but I want to say a few things about what we are doing on this, just to give you an idea. First of all, we established an AI working group to understand how the whole security landscape looks like. What does this mean for all the things we are doing? Second of all, collaboration with people like you, for example, trying to understand what you are actually seeing and doing and what does security mean for your AI applications. The ethical side was covered very briefly already. There was a mention that you need to have an understanding of what does it mean. So we are taking part in this um, exercise as part of the TechWaluaika program, where we are trying to develop a set of guidelines for ethical use of AI. This is an actual problem in security field because you can imagine when we do monitoring, when we do authentication, there's a lot of interesting stuff we get to see. A lot of the customers are actually really worried about what happens when the AI figures out something it's not supposed to figure out. And by the way, it's not quite as smart as, as the advertising makes it seem, so it's not going to figure out a whole lot of stuff that people are worried about. But having said that, you have to have some guidelines for how to actually use it. And finally, we are following the research on this, so there's a whole bunch of new applications, techniques, tools, whatever, coming out all the time on different fields. So that makes it really, really interesting for cybersecurity. 
I had a discussion not too long ago with, with a guy who was researching AI, and we had a debate for a while about what does it actually mean to do cybersecurity on AI. I think eventually I had him convinced that there is an actual cybersecurity on AI, but the, the debate on that definitely isn't ready. So I would love to continue it with you later on today or in, in future perhaps. With that, that's everything I had time for.